All right, well, why don't we get started? Hi, everybody. My name is Gloria Sacon. I am the director of our executive MBA programs here at Smith School of Business. I'm based on the Queen's University campus in Kingston, Ontario, and it's a real pleasure to join you today to talk about our Executive MBA Americas program. Uh, this webinar is focused on the South American uh, applicant, so I know many of you are based there and have joined us to learn more about our programs and how they may suit what you are hoping to achieve with pursuing an Executive MBA program. I'm joined by two alumni. Leo has joined us. There he is. You can see him on the screen there. And Mary um, is shortly on her way. So just by way of introduction, Leo, let's start with you. If you could tell us a little bit about why you decided to pursue an executive MBA program and, and how this program in particular really suited what you were after. Um. Well, first off, the, the first time I knew about uh, this program was in 2010 or 2011. It was a friend of mine. We were working in Vancouver and um, he showed me, look, uh, this is a Queens and Cornell uh, MBA program. And at the time, uh, I was I just bought uh, uh, an apartment in, in Vancouver. I had some financial commitments. And, um, and it wasn't possible, but it was something that resounded in my mind throughout the, the years. And it took me 11 years, actually, to get into the program because I, I and my decision, actually, to get into the program is because I needed a boost, uh, an academical boost in my career uh, that helped me to bind the experience that I had, that it's uh, uh, quite technical and to translate in a more effective uh, um, uh, business approach. And this was a perfect tool. It was uh, an EMBA uh, across the Americas. I'm, I'm Peruvian. I worked for an American company, uh, the, well, the Canadian subsidiary of, a, of an American company. Uh, it provided also a, a, a tie to to an Ivy League university like uh, Cornell. So I, I thought it was the best of, it was in the best scenario. And at the moment when I decided to, to proceed the program, I was, I was living in, in Peru, actually. I, I returned to Peru in 2019 and lived in, in Lima for five years. Great. And now you live and work in Canada, correct? Correct. Correct. Great. So the 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 program supported you to to make that um, that relocation. It 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 provided me it provided me, provided the vehicle to to get a relocation here. I lived before 2019. I lived in Canada for 12 years. Excellent. Excellent. Thanks so much, Leo. That's great context. And we'll come back to you with uh, with more questions as the session unfolds. We're going to talk about a few things. One is the motivation. You heard from Leo exactly why he wanted to do this. And I love the fact that he used the word boost because an executive MBA will certainly boost your potential, boost your opportunities to make changes in your career. We'll talk about the Executive MBA program, the partnership with Cornell, and you'll meet Sierra, who's an application advisor. She'll take us through the application process and of course, answer any questions that are on your mind. So as questions come up, I encourage you to ask the questions in the chat. Sierra will monitor the chat, ask and answer any of those questions, but we can also pose them to the panelists as well. Please don't wait until the end. Make sure you're typing your questions in as they come to mind. So there are a variety of reasons why someone may consider to pursue an executive MBA, whether it's to boost their career, whether it's going up in the organization into more senior positions, perhaps it's to move out and into a different functional space or industry space. Perhaps it's to start a business. Maybe you are an aspiring entrepreneur or you are an entrepreneur and you have ideas around what you would like to do or what else you would like to do. 
The EMBA curriculum is robust and it will take you through all of the foundational courses. And then of course, a look at all the functional areas of a business and support you with that strategic thinking and leadership development that is required when you're operating at those senior levels. The Executive MBA Americas program that Leo is a graduate of is a dual degree program. You will earn a Queen's degree and a Cornell degree. Very prestigious brands, very prestigious degrees from institutions in Canada and the US. So you can market yourself as a Cornell graduate and or as a Queen's graduate, depending on what your aspirations are. Your cohort will be extremely diverse. Your classmates will be based in Canada, the US, and South America. And so it really is an America's focus perspective by way of you're taught from professors from both Queens and Cornell institutions, and you're learning from peers that are sitting in Canada, the US, and South America. So the conversations are very robust. The opportunity to learn best practices from other leaders in your cohort exists every time you're in class and of course, outside of class as well. Your on-site sessions, when you are all together, will be on both the Queen's campus and the Cornell campus. So it really is a partnership between these two institutions in that you'll get to know both locations quite well. And of course, being taught from the best faculty members from both institutions. And students live across a variety of provinces, a variety of states, a variety of countries. And so that diversity piece is really, really evident in a program like this. And it's non-disruptive in that you can live in South America, be part of a virtual team, take your classes from your home without interrupting your profess professional commitments, your personal commitments and have the benefit of being enrolled in a very prestigious program. And you will be assigned to a team. It's a team-based learning model, which means that you'll be on a team that has a group of individuals that with very diverse backgrounds that will complement your skill set and support your learning, just like you will support their learning as well, drawing on your expertise and all of the knowledge that you have gained so far in your career. To give you an idea of what the team-based learning model looks like, I'm going to ask Leo to comment on his experience. We do create teams that are extremely diverse by um, ensuring that there is functional expertise, uh, a variety of functional expertise on each team. And a lot of that has to do with a couple of reasons. One is we want you to learn a lot in these team environments, but also you're going to be completing assignments with your teammates. So we wanna make sure that you have a robust team in which you can uh, fulfill the obligations of the program. So it really does mimic the real world and that you're working with this group of people to put forward the best product. Leo, can you tell us about your team experience and perhaps a, a few key learnings? Absolutely. Uh, my, uh, my team experience was, was excellent, was uh, very intense. Um, in the beginning of the program, actually, we were um, we were assessed with the DISC personality profile uh, assessment, and uh, and it's very interesting that that we fell in different quadrants in this uh, in this uh, circle, and and we were able to predict what would be the dynamics within the the the, the program. Uh, I the people in my team were very, very smart and very hardworking. So it was a very competitive team. Uh, it would have been in, impossible to complete the program without them. Um, and, and, I've been a, and I also felt that I've been able to complement with, even though I was not that uh, uh, fast like them, I I went to the bottom of things and I was able to be the devil's advocate in several situations, and later on that demonstrated that uh, I could I would I was able to contribute with uh, some of the missing pieces that uh, that the, um, that the advisors were 
in in our in our projects we're uh, recommending. So uh, it's a beautiful experience, very intense. It's what you actually uh, are going to get in a team environment, uh, in a in in a team work environment, and uh, and it's very intense. Without them, it would have been impossible to to complete the program. Thanks, Leo. Alumni network, being a part of the Executive MBA Americas program means that because you are a graduate of both the Cornell University and Queens University, you are an alumnus and can and tap into both networks quite extensively. So um, if you think about your career progression and the people that you would wanna be able to tap into as you evolve in your career, Having these two broad networks that span the globe is, is really, really important because we see individuals make significant changes in their careers by way of who is part of their network. Are you able to comment on the network, Leo, by way of perhaps even how you've kept connected with some of your classmates or have met members of the alumni community? Absolutely. Um, well, we... we um... I have classmates in the, there are members of the Canadian Olympic team. Uh, there's several members of the US Army, armed forces, uh, Navy, uh, uh, Marines. So uh, people with exposed to um, limit experiences. There's also uh, lawyers and people with a medical background uh, across the US. Um, so and of course, uh, uh, people with relevant expertise, both in, in, in Peru and, and Mexico. And, and during, in my cohort, there, there, was, no, there was no Chilean team. Uh, outstanding professionals, uh, all of them. And I'm, I'm in contact with them. And uh, now that I'm here in Toronto, I'm looking forward to the next uh, event in order to, uh, to see them. I've been in contact with... Uh, 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 through the phone with with some of them. Great. We're hosting an event in uh, April, Leo, in Toronto that I'm hoping that you will come out um, and join us. So stay tuned for more on that. Absolutely. To give you an idea of what the class commitment looks like, here is the schedule of the group of individuals that started the program this summer. The cadence will be similar for those that start next year. So we start the program in late June, and the combination of being at Queen's and at Cornell is how this is designed. So you'll spend a little bit of time at Queen's, a little bit of time at Cornell, you'll visit both campuses. But in late June, that's where you have in-person traditional classroom instruction on the campus. And then you'll fall into the cadence of every other Saturday and Sunday from your home connecting into classes. Professors are either in a studio here at Queens or Cornell. It's a very professional broadcast out to all members of the cohort, but you don't have to be anywhere outside of your home office for those class weekends. So you have lots of flexibility to be able to travel, whether it's for business or for pleasure on those class weekends. And the cadence is that every other Friday, Saturday. So dates are established and we don't move those dates around uh, once they are confirmed. In December, everyone in the class will spend four days at our Toronto Smith campus. In April, three days at the, sorry, four days at the uh, New York City uh, Cornell campus. And then at the very end of the program in November, again, an on-site session where you're spending some time at Queens and Cornell. So we expose you to both environments and our satellite campuses as well. So every other Saturday is what your class commitment is like for your formal courses. And then of course you'll have your team meetings layered in, in and around the class days. So that's what the schedule looks like as you start to think about planning for the year ahead. By way of the cost, we're really thrilled to be able to offer this program to individuals in South America. And we offer a funding package exclusively to our South American applicants. So you'll see the 175 
listed on the Queen's website, but we have um, a rate for South American applicants, and that is ninety-two thousand U.S. If you go to the if you go to the Americas website, you'll see that the tuition is listed as one hundred and eighty-six thousand U.S. dollars. So it really is a discounted tuition for South Americans, which really will support you with the goals that you have to earn these very prestigious uh, degrees. And our motivation is really to create the most diverse class that we possibly can with individuals that um, are throughout the Americas. I'd like to turn things over now to Sierra, who is an application advisor. You will meet her when you're working with her through the application process, but Sierra, over to you to take us through what this looks like. Thank you, Gloria. Um, nice to see everyone uh, joining our webinar today and nice to hear from our alum, Leo. So uh, again, my name is Sierra and I'm the application advisor for the Executive MBA program. So I just wanted to highlight the application process today. Um, so first of all, the most important thing for me to highlight is that I'm your first point of contact throughout the application process. So we'll be working together um, to collect all of the necessary application materials to then bring to the admissions committee for a holistic review of your application. So there's a few steps to complete your file. And first, we want to help you understand uh, what the program is all about and ensure that it's the right fit for you. So that's where the preliminary assessment you see outlined here comes into play. So we want to understand your professional background and get a sense of your academic background as well. So we can guide you in that right direction. And when it comes to uh, requirements, um, this program is designed for students who have a minimum of about eight to 10 years of work experience, as well as some consecutive management experience layered in there as well. So um, that can be program management or people management uh, that may vary or, or differ based on uh, your industry or career trajectory. So um, these are conversations that we can have uh, during that preliminary assessment uh, stage to discuss your experience level. So uh, for our program, we, we also like to see um, an undergraduate degree as part of your application. So submitting some official transcripts will be uh, a piece there. Um, to complete your profile, we're looking for a few other things as well. So we are looking for two current professional references. Uh, typically, that would be one current colleague, so we can get an understanding of your team experience as this is a team-based program. And we are also looking for a current uh, supervisor or superior as well. Um, uh, another piece here is uh, those essay questions that are, that are listed on our slide. So we ask you three application questions. And these are tailored to getting to know who you are as a person, even outside of what you uh, do professionally uh, for work. So um, again, this also helps uh, build our learning teams accordingly. Uh, once uh, all these requirements are in and the application process is done, we move you to an interview with our program director, Gloria. And after that stage, we would move you to the admissions committee for that final review of your application. So I'm, I'm here to work hand in hand with you throughout this entire process. And any questions that you may have uh, as you're working on your application along the way, so please feel free to uh, direct those to me and I'd be happy to help. So... I'll, uh, my email is listed here uh, to, to reach out and uh, I'll pass it back to Gloria. Thank you, everyone. Great. Thanks so much, Sierra. Okay, Leo, I'm going to keep putting you to work and have a few questions for you. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the whole balancing act because when someone considers a program like this, they obviously are thinking about it as they commit to fulfilling professional commitments personal commitments and then layering on top of it a program like this, which on average is about 25 hours a week. And that that will ebb and flow depending on a person's strengths. Can you can you share how you did this um, while you were enrolled in the program? Uh, well, um, I studied every night. Like uh, after returning from work, I studied from say 7 p.m. through 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. And after, uh, after classes uh, in the weekends, um, I also studied. I com tried to complete the, the work and do the readings. I think one, one of the most 
um, demanding tasks more than the, the assignments or the quizzes it's there themselves is the reading material. There's a lot of reading material that's got to be uh, chipped down. And um, if I could make a recommendation, something that perhaps it's in my, my to-do list, wish list, is to take a speed reading course. If you can take a speed reading course before the, getting into the program, that would be that would be great because there's a lot of of material that's gotta be uh, absorbed in order to um, perform correctly and contribute in the during the the, the class assignments and uh, and to participate. So I think that's that. So I was pretty much studying 20 hours per week. So if I worked 40 hours, um, uh, I had another 20 or a little more hours per, uh, per week for, for the program exclusively. Um, so yeah, that's, that was quite uh, demanding. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Not impossible, not impossible, but, but it's a, it's a tall order. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I kind of liken it to this short term pain for long term gain, right? Absolutely. It's it's an Absolutely. academically rigorous program and a program like this, you earn two MBAs, but you learn a lot about yourselves and your capacity while you're in a program like this. And so things will change the way that you show up changes, the contribution that you make at work changes. And the language of business is very fluent now that the MBA is, is part of the vocabulary. Um, what surprised you the most, Leo, about your transformation through the program in supporting you to, you know, new and different things? I'm, I'm surprised even in the way I, I uh, uh, write my, my emails. They look more professional. If I compare my emails, uh, my messages from now and in 2021, uh, I, I can tell that there's a there's a change. Um, also, I'm, I'm more um, conducive in the way I explain. You know, I work in engineering and construction, and it's mostly it's a, a lot of technical stuff, and but I'm have better tools to describe the implications of, of or, or the impacts in terms of uh, money and, and time, in terms of revenue and cost uh, across the time. And, uh, and after the program, especially, I'm so convinced uh, that, the, uh, that, the, that improving the margins is actually in, in lowering the costs and attaining efficiencies. And to me, the courses like uh, uh, operations management or even the, the, uh, the, the course on digital systems with uh, Professor, um, uh, I just uh, forgot, forgot his name. Mufti? Yes, yes, Professor uh, Mufti, Professor Mufti. Uh, 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 that, that course provide me, provide, provided me with so many connections, for example, in the normalization of catalogs or cost accounts across functional areas in, a, in the company that to me gave me a lot of uh, light bulb moments. And it's something that I'm, um, Salmar Mufti, um, and um, provided me a lot of uh, insights that I apply here at work. It's a, a, a lot of light bulb moments came from that course and also from operations management. Of course, every course is uh, important, like accounting and marketing. Uh, but these two, I think they were, they bonded very well with the career background that I, that I brought to the program. Great. Let's talk about the project. So there are two in this program. 
an individual project where students have an option to select either to complete a business plan for a new venture or a management consulting project where you tackle a live business challenge and put forward a recommendation. And then there's this team-based global business project where everyone will uh, work with a client that is based outside of North America and again, tackle a live business opportunity that the client has identified. Leo, can you speak to those projects and uh, and what you did for them, just to give our attendees an idea of you know the practical nature of these of this degree? Well, uh, my uh, my individual project was based on a, on a setting up a production facility for mesquite syrup. It's something. It's um, in Spanish. It's called algarrobina. And it's very popular. It's produced actually in the region from Peru, where I'm from. Um, and uh, I studied everything, the whole production process, uh, the procurement, the cost of the equipment, setting up the, the facility in order to, to fabricate it, even getting the, the cost for the logistics to, to freight it from, from uh, Paita, a port in northern Peru, to uh, LA and even the the costing of the duties and like it was a whole and complete uh, individual project very intense um, I think my my weakest perhaps on the on that uh, project was the marketing side because it's a it's a product that is pretty much unknown in North America and uh, and something that very interesting from my advisor from my project advisor was this question is well how do how do you peruvians like the the this syrup from zero to ten and my answer was perhaps like 1.5 two it's delicious but it's not it's not like something like a, it's not the equivalent of maple syrup here in, in Canada so that was a, a very important input and uh, that uh, kind of shifted the, the 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 target to develop the 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 Peruvian market to of this uh, syrup before aiming for North America so it was very interesting it was not a waste of time I, I actually have the numbers and I'm, I'm every time I I, I have a, a juice or or a, a, a cookie with a biscuit with with this um, syrup I, I think of it think of the project, uh, but it's uh, essential to develop the, the Peruvian market first. So it's got to be as popular as the maple syrup is in, here in Canada in order to be able to uh, do the, the, the jump, you know. So fascinating. What a very, very interesting project. Very interesting. Wow. Very interesting. Yeah. And... Um, and regarding the the uh, our global project, we we did a, an investigation in Europe for um, for a dial fabricator for motorcycles that wanted to uh, wanted to get into the the market for dials for race cars actually. So we went to a motor shows. We investigated actually every um, uh, uh, body, uh, like these shops that actually do the retrofits for for cars. And uh, we get a where I got a sample for a mar uh, we we obtained a market across Europe for nearly three point five million users. Um, being the, the mostly concentrated in England, uh, Germany, and France, and but we had the sample for 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 whole for Europe, so we did a, a pretty much like a takeoff of distributors. Uh, we mapped the brands and their products. Uh, we prepared actually a, a list of the speedometers, the tachometers, all, all the, the dials for all the brands and in the different uh, price, price ranges and technical features. So it was a bit of a technical, it was, there was a, also a marketing 
uh, it was the analysis of the, the personality of the brand. So it was a very interesting uh, project. And, uh, and the client was very happy with it. So uh, very powerful, very, very uh, exciting, actually. Yeah, sounds really interesting and exciting. Okay. Last question, Leo, as we wrap up this session. You've given us so much advice and knowledge about your experience, but if there's one piece of advice that you would offer to those that are thinking about doing this program based on what you now know, what would that one piece of advice be? Um, uh, if, if, um, it's totally worth it. I'm super happy about, uh, I've been thinking about this program for 11 years and I did it. So I, I thought a lot about it, and I don't regret it. I'm 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 very happy. It uh, it's not only because of the sense of achievement, but but also because it provides you with the tools to really unleash uh, and tap uh, processes in the in the in in the company where you are. Uh, working, I also I also have a, a bit of a side stint because uh, during the the uh, the course with uh, with Elspeth, El Elspeth Murray, I I kind of became uh, aware that I could be an entrepreneur, that I could have my my own company. So there's something that I have in on the side that is kind of uh, brewing, it's I'm, I'm working on that like ten hours on my uh, per week on my weekends, and with another two friends in in Peru. So, long story short, it's super worth it. If uh, if I could, uh, if you if you can do it, if uh, don't hesitate, go for it. Great. I hope I, I hope I conveyed the, the, my message, my recommendation correctly. Yes, very well. And thank you very much for taking the time out to join us today and, and uh, sharing your experience and inspiring the next generation of executive MBA candidates. Um, please don't hesitate to reach out. Sierra's email is listed there. You can always reach us by our website. And uh, really pleased that so many of you were able to take the time today to join us. And again, a big thanks to Leo. And I hope to see everybody here at Smith School of Business real soon. Bye for now. Bye for now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.